Welcome to Dark Sources. I'm Alfredo Martinez, and I have with me Harold Carter and Monica Smith. Good to have both of you on. Thank you. Thanks. You're very welcome. And so uh, tell me, where did your interest uh, in spirituality begin, both of you? For me, it was from birth. My family, um, I just recently found out that um, my family came from um, Lapland. They were Sami and Scottish. Um, and um, there was a big community where I grew up in the Pacific Northwest. And they never said who they are, but they taught um, what they knew. Um, so I grew up with it. And back mm -hmm. in 2000 is when I started searching for what is this that I am? Um, mm -hmm. And I... Originally um, found some Wicca groups and started learning with them, but then I decided that's not quite quite it. So right. um, now it's the, the old ways, going back to my ancestors. Okay, nice. My story is um, I grew up in a household that didn't really, nobody ever talked about uh, the creator or, or any spirituality or any religious, um, you know, faction. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so my household, my, my mother basically said that I was free to choose whatever spirituality that I wanted. And that was kind of my upbringing. Um, okay. uh, later on in life, um, I had issues with alcoholism and I found myself incarcerated uh, for many, many years. Um, so my spirituality ultimately developed uh, within the confines of the razor wire jungle. Um, and that consisted of uh, somebody passing my bunk. Uh, in prison saying, hey, check out this periodical. Um, I started reading it, um, and this was a periodical that uh, revolved around paganism. Um, and ever since that day, um, it just the trajectory has always been uh, pagan-oriented. Mm. Now, what would you say was your moment where you said, wow, this magic is, it really works. You know, you started seeing real results in, in magic and spirituality. For me, it's, I was going through a very dark time. Um, it was probably in 1989. Um, and I started, you know, spending a lot of time in the woods and with the trees and the animals. And I started asking for things. Um, and then everything I asked for would come to me. So I started testing it and I, I learned that way on my own. Okay. In my situation um, within the, the penal institutions, a lot of folks, when they get locked up, they got like that jailhouse religion. Um, mm -hmm. When I was incarcerated, um, I, I looked at all the religions on the planet, anything that I could find from any religious tradition I was absorbing. Um, and what I found was that um, at the time, uh, Wicca at the time was something that kind of utilized all of the uh, occultic information on the planet and utilized it to their own, um, uh, to, to the to, to the tradition itself. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's kind of the trajectory with that. Um, modern modern times, I don't uh, identify as Wiccan. Although um, I identified as Wicca for probably 20 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now, are there any uh, particular occult books that inspired uh, inspired you guys and, and changed your guys' life? Not for me. I mean, I did read some, but it was just more of learning who I am. Um, yeah. All my training came from my family. Um, and then later I did meet some shamans that, you know, help me learn some more things. Um, so it was more, per, you know, person to person, one on one. Okay. I think books are very important for uh, people's spirituality. It's like the first thing that people um, get in tune with, they read, um, you know, before they venture off into like actual circles. Uh, but the first most influential book was a book by Donald Michael Craig called Modern Magic. Um, and I spent a lot of time with that book, and that kind of laid the foundation for um, my interest in uh, the Golden Dawn and things of that nature. Yeah, I, um, in my early days of spirituality and magic, uh, I got a hold of that book, Modern Magic, and, and I started working through it, and, and it really opened my eyes and kind of gave me the mindset to venture off. And then, like you, I 
I got into the Golden Dawn. I got the the one by Israel Regardi, the fat book that goes from neophyte to adeptus minor. And I started working with that. So yeah, I can definitely relate to those books I have in my library to this day. So mm -hmm. very good information. Um, now tell me a bit about your magical style. Magical style? Uh, magical style for me um, would be uh, music. Um, I think that magical, I think magic, a, a lot of things, well, for me, I've always believed and still to this day that magic, uh, that, that magic infused with music is very uh, potent. Um, uh, you know, repetitional magic uh, is potent. And I think that music um, can be repetitional, um, especially if you have a chorus where you say over and over and over. And especially if, uh, you know, it catches the ear of the masses where people start uh, saying your chorus over and over. They're saying it with you and uh, basically, you know, generating um, that particular uh, repetition up to the ethers and astral so it helps um with my magic individually so i would say music music okay yeah i would say that music you know music is a spell in itself i mean you know some some grocery stores will play slow music so that you'll take your time going through the aisles and end up buying more stuff yeah. so you know i can definitely relate to that and uh i want to talk a bit about you know that video you sent me yesterday where uh, for the subscribers who are watching, you know, this guy, he can sing, he can rap, he can do it all. Um, did you, uh, do you particularly specialize in singing or rapping or more of like uh, instrumental music? Um, I don't, I don't like to constrict myself to any particular uh, genre. Um, right. I, I do participate in uh, modern pagan hip hop here in the United States. Um, mm -hmm. And there, th there's a few others that, that do that too. I, I also will bang on a six string um, and play like uh, some folk music uh, with, with a djembe or um, I would say multi-genre. Um, and I'm always uh, willing to experience or uh, experiment uh, with with different genres because I think that there can be many forms of expression uh, with with music, with ultimately as a reflection of spirituality. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you, would you say that you you make uh, ritual music or meditation music? You have some available. Um, I don't have any meditation music, so to speak, um, at all. Mo it's it's a good it's a good point we don't no we we've don't we've been requested we to we've put been a track to, together right. of drumming right in the past and i think in the past three months we we were it, it was requested of us to to have some drumming uh it's it's a good point mm -hmm. so what about with like bin binaural beats do you guys mess with that at all what was that i didn't uh binaural beats where are they uh it's kind of uh where they I really don't know how to explain it too well, but um, it's kind of like music, uh, sound to get you into a certain state of mind by certain, certain, uh, certain drumming or certain repetitions. People have variations of doing it, hmm. but um, but anyway, um, now do you do you two prefer to uh, work magic outside in nature rather than indoors? I definitely do coming from my background um, and with the music I do, you know, shamanic drumming to help you getting to the other states. So definitely use that a lot. I try to drum every day um, and send out love and healing to to everyone. And for you know, I do that also for specific requests for me. Um, mm -hmm. Drumming is a big thing in my practice. I mean, when we attend, uh, you know, public rituals, I mean, we're always outside. Right. Um, uh, we were talking about uh, hermeticism earlier. Uh, I mean, I'll, sometimes if I'm feeling anxious or like uncentered, like I'll bang out the LVRP r right in the crib, you know I mean? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Um, now, do you like to uh, work with the elements in particular? Um, is there a particular element element that you're, you're drawn to as opposed to the others? Um, for me, I'm, 
work a lot with storms and you know that power and energy and the moon um seems to you know what called to me and most powerful in my past but I'm learning new things I think I think working with a particular element um you know magically depends on need um mm -hmm. for an example um if I need to find you know some cash because rents do like yeah. I I'll might you know bang out the um the earth elemental tablet in the Enochian system um, and utilize that particular uh, tablet. Um, astrologically, I'm a fire sign. Uh, so I think, I think a, a lot and I draw into uh, the, the astrological makeup of my uh, myself, you know, with natal charts and all that stuff. Yeah. So I think, I think if the, if I was going to say, you know, my favorite, probably fire, because, you know, that seems to be astrologically my makeup. However, not to, uh, you know, not to utilize the other elements too, because they're all important. Right. Right. Um, now, what would you say are some misconceptions about magic? Uh, misconceptions about magic would be that magic um, can be instantaneous, uh, like poof, in there. Uh, yeah. ma magic is something that kind of, in my opinion, uh, I feel that it kind of rolls Oh, okay. Magic for me is everything. Everything you do is magic. Mm -hmm. um, it's everything that you think of your state of mind and, you know, things that you foresee or want to come to you. Just thinking about things that, you know, goals in the future. That's magic. You know, there's magic in everything you do. Stirring a cup of coffee and going around, you know, just everything you do is magic. And um, when people realize that, then they can really use it to their advantage. Magic um monica and i don't we is it it's magic is not something that we do magic is something that we are mm -hmm. okay so you know I, i've heard the saying that goes um you know don't focus on a ritual make your lifestyle and your life the ritual so that's kind of what you guys are explaining i'm going with that yeah okay i'm gonna have to give king billy Al credit for that one. Uh, um now, what would you say is the biggest mistake that experienced practitioners make? Um, the biggest mistake that experienced practitioners make, mm. um, I would say, I would say, I would say public relations. Um, perhaps you know, for an experienced, uh, you said magician. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so somebody that. Well, I'll just use uh, the, the media for an example. Okay. Um, you know, if if so, if somebody is you know on a public stage and they they tend to lean towards like a, a political infrastructure, I think yeah. things that like politics will divide communities. So I think that uh, that becomes a hindrance uh, to someone. Um, you know, there's experienced uh, authors, you know, through Llewellyn Modern Day that, you know, that tag along to these political fronts and, you know, and then adversarially, well, the people on the other side of the politic, you know, they no longer want to buy their books and that becomes a detriment to them. So I think for experienced magicians to, um, you know, kind of have that equilibrium within their practice is very important from from uh, in front of the public. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, there are some practitioners that tend to mix politics with, you know, their spiritual message. And, you know, uh, I'm not condemning them, but me personally, I don't think it, politics belong in spirituality at all. Nope. I, you know, it just, like you said, it just causes division. Um, now, what divination method would you say that you guys prefer? Um. I've always uh, fancied um, scrying um, okay. with the Enochian system. Um, I've always liked that. Um, but also, uh, I I also have seen good results in just uh, dream interpretations when I, uh, I don't do as much as now that I used to, but in the past, I was documenting on like a dream journal type of situation. Mm -hmm. um, and I found that to be effective as well. Uh, and that kind of, triggers like deja vu a lot especially if you're writing those dreams down mm -hmm. so enochian scrying and uh dream interpretation would be my answer okay 
for me, I'm using a tarot cards or oracle cards, but also a lot of journeying. Um, so with the shamanic drum and the beat and um, going on a purpose and um, and doing a lot of journeying with different deities, um, animals, gods, uh, you know, there are mm. lots of different things that you can call in on journeying. Um, and, and you can also, you know, I, I, and happened to me in the past is going on journeys when I wasn't even aware of it, you know, just a daydream and just pops in out of nowhere, just visions mm -hmm. of things. Now, are there certain particular deities that you guys like to work with as opposed to others? Um, with my background, um, from my heritage, um, I work a lot with the animal spirits. Okay. Um, I'm still trying to get to know, you know, what God and goddess resonates with me, um, okay. to see how that works and incorporate that in my practice, but it's not something I've done, um, in the past and I'm taking a dive into it now. Okay. Um, for me, um, the, this past Samhain has been really lightening, uh, to me because like Monica was saying, Oh, I don't know if she just said it, but the, uh, we just did like DNA testing for, uh, for our ancestors. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, it's interesting to find, you know, who in our bloodline was, you know, what pagan, you know, pantheons were, you know, being invoked, you know, through the bloodline, you know? <laughs> um, and so that's, that's interesting. Um, I also like the, the animistic, uh, situation, uh, you know, before deities were even created, it was animism. It was animism first, and then it became uh, deity. So, uh, and I associate it. I associate with uh, the wolf uh, for a spiritual totem. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, if we're talking about uh, deity itself, um, I believe, I feel um, that the uh, the the pantheon of gods, almost uh, or the current um, that is talked about in the mythos, um, created us. Um, um, so I'm trying to go down that rabbit hole and find out which deity actually created me and gave me a thought to, mm -hmm. you know, manifest. Um, and although I'm kind of all over the place, um, I find it important to um, resonate with uh, a, a god and goddess of the same pantheon. I don't think it's like for me, I like to keep it in the same pantheon. Um, I've always been uh, fascinated with uh, uh, the Greek pan. Mm -hmm. um, I've always been fascinated with Apollo. And a lot of that has to do with um, my passion for music. Um, but also, you know, I can only I can only give um, I can only ex express to the world uh, what I know now as for how much knowledge I have for what I understand. Um, so at the present moment, um, I'm starting to realize, well, in, in the goddess uh, light, I'm beginning to notice that uh, the goddess Isis is the face of every goddess on the planet. Um, so in a lot of ways, I'm kind of uh, attracted towards the Egyptology uh, at this point, mm -hmm. because it seems the closest um, pantheon to the Fertile Crescent, um, okay. where life originated. Okay. All right. Now, let's talk a bit about uh, Fringe TV. So, to all the subscribers watching out there, um, they have a website, fringetv.online. I encourage you all to go that to that website. Um, go ahead and tell us a bit about that. Monica? So, Fringe TV started in 2015. That's correct. Um, so in, it kind of went dormant, even though it still played. Um, and we took it over in July um, and revamping it, um, getting a lot of great shows on there, um, a lot of old stuff with um, elders of the world. Um, we play the pagan music on there. Um, we have... Um, our show, The Lone Wolf Show, we used to be a podcast, and that's moved over to Fringe TV Online. Um, mm -hmm. We created new shows, um, the Pagan Music Video Spotlight, um, and we also have the Pagan Book Review. Um, and then we also have um, Enchantica with Ginger Ackley. Um, we have Asto Turo with Serona Rose. Um, we have Apple, Apple and Oak Metalworks. With Tim Rickman, mm -hmm. um, which ones am I forgetting? 
Um, you know, we we have um, uh, Lawn Mile Little Cat has has a segment. Um, uh, yeah, Tamara von Forslund. Yeah, Tamara von Forslund out there in Australia. Um, we like to focus on the pioneers of witchcraft. We like to uh, reach out to the modern living elders of the craft because we like to get to the core, um, not the watered down uh, stuff that is, you know, you know, that's on, you know, mainstream uh, media. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Fringe TV, um, uh, it's it, accessible on, on any uh, device, um, laptop. Uh, cell phone, uh, computer, www.frenchtv.online. Um, it did start in 2015 um, under the Circle of Ancient Sisters um, mm -hmm. and as a teaching platform, um, and it was revamped um, in July. Um, and yeah, it's been it's been an endeavor, none the, nonetheless. It's a full-time job and a servitude uh, to the old ways. We have some cool things too. We play a lot of you know movies on there. We also have cartoons on the weekends for the oh, kids. Nice. Um, so yeah, we try to incorporate everyone um, in this programming. Yeah, it's it's really cool to be able to um, interview different witch elders of the world because it, because it not only is it good networking, um, it gets uh, you know the misinformation uh, you know uh, banished. You know we, right, we find right. out we find out really what's going on. Um, so yeah, um, it's it's not surprising uh, to find you know uh, Raymond Buckland's uh, priestess uh, you know on French TV or um, uh, you know Selena Fox in her o earlier days mm -hmm. um, and even you know and it's not just uh, for you know uh, witchcraft or witchery we also do you know elements of uh, hermeticism okay. um, and anything that's on the fringe you know anything right on the right on the cusp of uh, you know, uh, effed up. You know, we we will yep. play on uh, on the fringe. Um, yep. Okay. Now, uh, for those of us, for those of uh, you guys who are watching, uh, when you go to the website, it says, "Welcome to Fringe TV." We bring you metaphysical content, movies, live talk shows, music videos, documentaries, home shopping, and more. Uh, pagan and alternative programming. A division of Circle of Ancient Sisters Incorporated. We offer several ways to watch unique programming 24 hours a day watch free now out of all those aspects of fridge tv which would you say is the most the most watched the most viewed that people like you get the best feedback from? well um the uh, fringe tv is is the official sponsor of the international pagan music association i see and so because of that um I think the most watched or the highlight, I mean, it's hard to say, but I mean, I, I enjoy that. So, um, home, you know, pagan music, um, I think is, is, is really popular. Um, uh, we just played something from primal rhythm. Who's mm -hmm. uh, a wicked awesome, uh, band up in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, that we filmed in Florida uh, about a couple of weeks ago. And when we played that, our ratings like went through the roof. So I think people are enjoying that uh, the, the pagan musical aspects of it. Mm. Okay, and uh, to everybody who is watching, I will have the link to Fringe TV below this video. So I encourage everybody to uh, go to the video description, click that link, and uh, take a look at everything and check it all out. It's a lot of you good stuff. On us, you can find us on Facebook at Fringe TV. Um, okay. And we put up a daily schedule on there. Um, so right. that way you can go find your favorite shows. We have a lot of history too in um, creation stories and um, different myths. Um, so there's lots of great stuff on there. Yeah, there's not a lot of footage of like the old days. Um, we we run uh, video footage of Gerald B. Gardner. Um, we okay. run, uh, you know, uh, Raymond Buckland, um, you know, th things of that nature. Um, we just put up some stuff from Civil Leak, um, the Farers. Um, you know, we try we try to bring uh, that we try to bring the old school and get to the core of what the craft um, really is. OK, all right. And uh, to the viewers, I will also have the uh, Fringe TV Facebook page link below the video so you guys can go check that out and check the schedule and, and see what you guys want to watch um 
Harold and Monica, it's been a, a great conversation. I've been, enjoyed uh, talking with you both. Thank you very much for coming on to Dark Source. Thanks, man. Thank you for having us. Yep, and to all the everyone who's watching, like and subscribe to Dark Sorcerer.